how do we expand and simplify algebraic expressions? In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be going over five examples of expanding and simplifying algebraic expressions. I'm showing each example on screen now. I certainly encourage you to try these examples on your own, expand and simplify these expressions before watching the solutions. With that said, let's scroll back on up to number one and get to work. Being very comfortable working with algebraic expressions is very important, which is why we're going through these examples. So here we've got 4 times x plus 7 plus 3 times 2x minus 3. We're going to want to expand this and then add like terms to simplify it. For starters, since we have 4 multiplied by x plus 7 in parentheses, we'll have to use the distributive property. First, we multiply 4 times x, which is 4x, and then to this we add 4 times 7, which is 28. Then we gotta add all this stuff over here. We'll need to use the distributive property again because we've got 3 getting multiplied by a sum that is in parentheses. 3 multiplied by 2x, that is 6x, and then 3 multiplied by negative 3, that's going to be minus 9. Now we can add some like terms. We've got a 4x and a 6x, and then we have two constant terms, 28 and minus 9. So adding 4x and 6x, that gives us 10x. And then adding the constants, 28 and negative 9, that will give us 19, so plus 19. And there we go, that is our final answer. This somewhat messy expression is equal to 10x plus 19. So that wasn't too bad, just a little bit of distributive property and then adding like terms. Let's head on to the next example. Now we've got a similar thing to the stuff we were doing before. We've got one thing being multiplied by a sum that's in parentheses. But of course, instead of just a number like 3 or 2, we have x minus 4 being multiplied by this sum in parentheses. That makes it a little messier, but it doesn't change the process at all. We're just going to use the distributive property. So first, we have x minus 4 multiplied by 3x. So I'll write that here, 3x multiplied by x minus 4. Continuing to distribute, we have x minus 4 times positive 2. So this will be plus 2 multiplied by x minus 4. And now what we have here looks a lot like what we had up here. We've just got to use the distributive property again. First, we'll multiply 3x by x. That gives us 3x squared. Then 3x multiplied by negative 4. That will give us minus 12x. Then moving on to the next term, we'll have to use the distributive property again. Start off multiplying 2 by x, which gives us plus 2x. Then multiply 2 by negative 4 to finish this distribution, and that's minus 8. And now, just as before, we've got to add like terms. You can see we only have one x squared term, so we can bring that straight down, 3x squared. We have two x terms. We have minus 12x and we have plus 2x. So we can combine those, minus 12, x plus 2x is minus 10x. And then we've just got one constant at the end, minus 8, so minus 8. All right, not too bad. So this expression here is equal to 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Onwards to example 3. I think this is a neat little expression. We'll have to do a similar thing as before using the distributive property. If you're familiar with factoring the difference of squares, then this might look a little familiar to you. So let's do some expanding and see what we get. And I'll actually expand this expression in a slightly different way than we did this one up here. Just to show you a different way you could do it. Up here, we took the whole term x minus 4 and multiplied that by 3x. And then we took the whole term x minus 4 and multiplied that by 2. What we could have done instead was multiply x by 3x, add that to x times 2, add that to negative 4 times 3x, and so on. So let's try doing it that way down here. For starters, we multiply the square root of a by the square root of a, which is, by definition of square root, just a. So we just multiplied square root of a by square root of a. Now we'll do square root of a times the negative square root of b. So that's minus square root a times square root b. Then we have the square root of b multiplied by the square root of a. 
So that's plus square root b square root a. And then lastly, the square root of b multiplied by the negative square root of b. So that's minus the square root of b squared, which of course is just minus b. Now to simplify this, you'll notice that these two terms cancel out. We have a minus square root a times square root b and a positive square root b times square root a. And of course the order of this multiplication doesn't matter. We could rewrite that as square root a times square root b. So those two terms cancel out and we are left with a minus b. So those are two different ways we could go about using the distributive property. I prefer the way we did it in this example just because I think it's a little bit more straight to the point. But pretty neat example, this pretty nasty looking expression is just equal to a minus b. That's the beauty of expanding and simplifying. Let's head down to problem number four. Here we have 8x plus 2 squared. We can go ahead and do a little bit of expanding. 8x plus 2 squared, remember that's just 8x plus 2 multiplied by 8x plus 2. Now we just need to use the distributive property like we've been doing. First, we'll multiply 8x by 8x. That gives us 64x squared. Then multiply 8x by 2, that 2 right there. That's going to give us 16x. Then we have 2 multiplied by 8x, that's plus 16x, and then finally 2 multiplied by 2, that's plus 4. Remember, with the distributive property, we just want to make sure that each term in these groups gets multiplied by each term in the other group, and then we add them all together. Now we just got to do a little bit of adding like terms. We only have one x squared term, so we can bring that straight down, 64x squared. And then we have two x terms, a 16x and a 16x. We'll add those together, that gives us 32x. And then we just have one constant here at the end, plus 4, so we can bring that straight down. Whoops, there we go, plus 4. So 8x plus 2 squared, that is equal to 64x squared plus 32x plus 4. Finally, our last example, similar to the previous one, except now, instead of a squared term, we have a cubed term. Since we're cubing this, we have x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 one more time. So this will be a little bit gross, but don't worry, it's not too bad. For starters, we can just ignore this third factor of x plus 3. Let's start by focusing on the first two factors. Again, we just need to use the distributive property. So we have x multiplied by x, which is x squared. And then to that, we add x times x times 3. That is plus 3x. And then to that, we add 3 times x. That's plus 3x. And then to that, we add 3 times 3 which is plus 9. There we go. And then this is getting multiplied by that third copy of x plus 3. All right, so that's not too bad. We just focused on multiplying two of the factors together first, and then we'll worry about this third factor later. Before we do that, we want to finish simplifying this by adding these like terms. So this is equal to x squared, and then we're adding these, so that's plus 6x, and then plus 9 and then multiplied by that last factor of x plus 3. All right, now to finish expanding, we just need to use the distributive property. I'm going to write the next equals sign over here, so we've got lots of space. We start off with x squared multiplied by x. That's just x cubed. And then to this, we add x squared multiplied by 3. That is plus 3x squared. So now we have multiplied this term by each term in the other group. So now we can move on to the next term. 6x multiplied by x. What is that? That's plus 6x squared. Then 6x multiplied by 3. That's plus 18x. Now we're moving on to the last term. 9 multiplied by x. That's plus plus 9x. And then to this we add 9 multiplied by 3. That's going to be plus 27. All right, look at that. That's not so bad. We've just got to add some like terms here. You see we only have one x cubed term, so we can bring that straight down. And then we have two x squared terms. We have a 3x squared and a 6x squared. So we'll add those together. That gives us plus 9x squared. 
And then similarly, whoops, screen just went up a little bit. We've got two x terms. We have 18x plus 9x. So we can combine those like terms. That's going to give us plus 27x. And then finally at the end, we have a constant all by itself, plus 27, so we can bring that straight down. And hey, look at that, that's our answer. x plus three cubed is equal to x cubed plus nine x squared plus 27 x plus 27. So to expand this, we just don't let the fact that there are three factors scare us. We focus on what we're comfortable with, multiplying two factors by each other first using the distributive property, and then after simplifying that, we worry about that third factor. Then we can use the distributive property again. We got this, and then we just had to add like terms, and we arrive at our answer. So that's just a little taste of expanding and simplifying a handful of algebraic expressions. You can see we use the distributive property an awful lot. We also have to be comfortable recognizing and combining like terms. And remember that two terms are like terms if they have the same exact variable factor. For example, 3x squared and 6x squared are like terms because they both have the same variable factor of x squared. 18x and 9x both have a variable factor of x. If we scroll up to where we had some constants, one of these examples had some common constants, just gotta find it, must have been up here. We add plus 28 and minus 9. Those are like terms because they have a common variable factor of x to the power of zero, which is equal to one, meaning that they didn't really have a variable factor, which is why we call them constants, and that's why they're like terms. And I just wanna mention that these examples were adapted from James Stewart's Early Transcendentals Calculus textbook. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description to buy the book if you're interested. Using that link costs you nothing extra and helps Wrath of Math a little bit. So I hope this video helped you understand how to expand and simplify algebraic expressions. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I got teeth behind my eyes. Tear the flesh from